Gators Breakdown. Because there's never a dull moment in Gator Nation. The Gators Breakdown podcast is ready to go. I'm your host, David Waters. You can find me on social media at Gator Dave underscore SDC. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you can already see our special guest right here, all the way hailing from Germany. In Germany right now on spring break is Noel Porten, Porten Jagen. And Noel, thank you so much. I know it's spring break. I know you're trying to spend some time with the family, uh, the little time you get to, to, to go home. But uh, thank you for taking some and carving some time out for joining us right here on Gators Breakdown. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for being here. I'm, I'm really excited for that. So, yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, so I know you said you've been to some podcasts before, but this is, uh, I think since you've been in America at, at Florida, I think probably the first time we get to hear in depth your story a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, some podcasts were just before and how it's going to be. Um, but right now I got some experience, so I'm really ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we'll get into Noel's story, how he ended up at Florida and just how different it is, you know, the, the game of football in Germany compared to to. to American football, or it's the same sport, but the journey uh, of getting there is a lot different for, for, for Noel. So we'll get into all that and, you know, first couple of spring practices as well, uh, the winter workouts, all that. We'll get into it right here. So everybody hit that like button, subscribe to Gators Breakdown if you haven't done so yet, and uh, really support what we're doing right here through Florida Victoria. So, Noel, that's only two practices in. You've been through just a couple of spring practices. How's it been so far? Um, I think it's pretty good. Um, it's a high intensity. It is it is something different, of course. It is nothing uh, like you can compare in Germany. Um, so you can't you have to get used to it. But um, I'm really I think um, that we are a really good hardworking group. Um, I I feel really good right now, and yeah, everything's fine. So of course, you know you're playing along the 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 offensive line, and it's a little, you know not in full pads yet, not really going hot and heavy through those first couple of practices. But what's been the differences so far that you've noticed in going against, you know, fellow college athletes now? Yeah, um, it is the intensity and the speed. So in Germany, um, it is um, it is it is really different how the speed is and how the intensity is. So for comparison, like the highest um, I played in the highest um, league in Germany in the GFL and this speed is more is is almost almost compared to college but college is still faster and more intense so um it is it is so much quicker everything so when we do one on ones it is like like that and i have to snap i have to punch i have to block that guy and it is really nothing compared to in germany so i have to get used to it but you know i'm, I'm working hard and i'm on it did, did it surprise you how fast some of your fellow teammates are on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah. Yeah. So, because like, um, yeah, when, when, when your life is always in Germany and you don't expect guys to move that fast and move that quick or move that good in general, um, it is always something. So it, it's surprising when, when guys can move like that, it's really just really hard. Yeah. So, so far, you, I guess you got in, in January, what about your time as a college student and, and making the adjustment to living in America? Yeah, so um, I think the, the transition went great. Um, there was no really hard time. Um, yeah, of course, the first week, I'm a freshman at college. I have to get used to everything. Um, I mean, it is so much different than here in Germany. And um have to get used to it. And But... Like in general, it wasn't that difficult for me to adapt to have, um, you know, the different schedules and stuff. Um, also, with the school, everything's good. Um, so I really adapted well here, and right now, um, yeah, I can I can say that I'm a, I'm a really so so there, there there's nothing hard hard for me right now with like adapting here uh, anymore. Was was the hardest part all the the time change? Yeah, yeah, of course. Like right now, it's uh, right now it's a five five hour time change, um, so it is it is different because like of course like the first two three days is a little bit of the jet lag still in there, um, but no, I, I'm used to it, so everything is good. And you had to go through a time change and go right into winter workouts as well. So you're trying to yeah. adjust your body to the physical differences, but also you know the yeah. differences in just the time change. So uh, pr pretty interesting there. So. 
Wait, which players have, I'm sure it's along the offensive line group, that's probably who you're mostly with, but what players have taken you in to kind of help make that transition a bit easier? Yeah, so, of course, um, in uh, with my roommates, so um, Najee Harris, um, Bryce Lovett, Shamar James, they're all really welcoming. They help me with everything. Um, but also, um, yeah, uh, Mike Williams, uh, the freshman uh, offensive lineman, and uh, Fletcher Westfall, we print pretty good. Um I would say like we we're good friends. They they help me with everything. Um, if I got everything, you know, we can talk. We can talk about everything. We we're good friends. So um, yeah, there was there was nothing like really. Okay, I have to find some friends. You know, it's 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 natural, and everything can can and everybody can help me. So this was pretty nice. Yeah. Anything culturally so far that's kind of shocked you, or maybe it has taken some time to get used to? Um, it is it is really. For for me, it's really crazy that everything is like around cars. Like here in Germany, like when when I go downtown, there's no cars really like on the streets. You have to walk everywhere. Like you can walk, um, you can walk to the next to the next uh, supermarket. You can walk to the next cinema. You can walk to the next park. You know, um, but when you don't have a car, it's it's harder. It's harder to get uh to yeah explore the city, explore the town, and um, yeah. Well, at least, at least there's plenty around campus, and on campus you can yeah, walk as yeah. well. <laughs> uh, so let, let's go back a little bit, Noel. How did you get into football? You know, it is a bit different there. You're playing American football, but it's not what it is here in America. And so, as you said, and if I if I and if I'm right about this, there's not really high school football like we know it here in, in America. So, how, how did you get into American football? Yeah. So, um, my whole life, um, I was a dancer. I danced uh, hip hop. Um, my grandmother, she opened the dance school here um, in my hometown. Um, then my mom, um, she um, she was the leader then after that. And then, you know, I was born into it. I was born into dancing. And this was my whole life for, I don't know, let's say like 15, 16, 17 years. Um, and after that, it was never enough for me just to dance like two times a week. Um, I I also I, um, always I, I wanted some more. I wanted to do some extra, because yeah, I'm a, I'm a good. Uh, I I can move pretty good, but it was just like bored, you know what I mean. And um, so I searched around some sports. Of course, in Germany, I tried soccer. Um, played soccer for two years. Um, I did a wrestling for a couple of months, but like the the WWE type of wrestling. Um, and then after that, my uncle. Um, he said, come on, man, like, I, I have to get you into, like, a football practice because you got the size. You can you can play that really well. Like, it, it could be something fun for you. And I was like, all right, okay, let's 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 try it. And it, it was love at first sight. It was um, it was so nice. Everyone everyone was nice to me. It was um, something that I can um, – that I was – wait, how do I say it? Um, so – they they needed me you know what i mean so they needed the size of me because like in every other sport is like okay you are too big you are too slow something like that you don't have that enough stamina you know but in in football it was like okay you are big we need big people we need tall people we need big people we need all linemen that can block that can protect the quarterback that can open run lanes for the running back and we need guys like you and this was like wait they need like me and this was this was so this was so much fun because okay they need me and this was so so good for me to say yeah man this is my new sport and i can i can do that yeah so how long have you actually played american football i started playing american football in 2019 yeah in 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 february 2019 this was my first practice my first ever practice um i played a u19 season and a U17 season, um, yeah. And in Germany, it's it's not like that. Um, they are like um, the teams at high schools, because it's just not common like that. We have clubs, so okay. there are open clubs. You can go there, and there are multiple, also multiple clubs in the city and something like that. And I went to uh, the KIT Engineers it was my first ever team, um, and yeah, I played there for one and a half years. Okay, so if I go to your your bio that Florida put up, uh, your so your last bit of football was in the German Football League. Um, 
I, I'll get you to say the team name because I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to miss yeah. <laughs> uh, But led to a division championship and the German Bowl. That's the championship game. So what what was that experience like? Is um, are you playing with similar aged? I mean, I, I guess in that league, it's you know, you those guys are professionals, so you're actually paying playing guys that are are a lot older than you as well. Yeah. So um, I went to uh, it's called the Schwäbisch Schwäbisch Hall Unicorns. Um, I went to the Unicorns um, in 2020 um, because there's a program called the Unicorns Academy and they are offering the a kind of type high school. So um, the Unicorns, the team, um, they are uh, in a collaboration with the school and they're just saying, OK, you got school and after school, you got two hours of football every Monday, Tuesday and Thursday. And every Wednesday and Friday is team practice. So um, from Monday to Friday, you got everyday football. And that's what I wanted to achieve, to get better off the field, to get better knowledge, to get better, you know, technique, and to help um, growing players um, from all around Germany. You know, I'm not from Schwäbisch Hall, but I'm from a town called Karlsruhe. We got, we got people, uh, we had people from Munich. We had people from... Um, Berlin. We had people from Hamburg. It's all around Germany, and they want to uh, get better, and that's why I went to the Unicorns Academy. I played um, three seasons of U19 football, so it's similar age. It's under 19. Um, and then after that, I went to the GFL team, and the GFL is a semi-pro league, so most of the guys, they don't get paid. And um, I went there because, okay, I can still have time to develop before actually going to college and in the GFL are actual grown men. So I, I, in uh, last year I played as the second youngest in my team um, as a starting tackle. And I played against grown men, 25, 22 year olds. And uh, yeah, this is, (laughs) this is really good, you know, to say that you, that you played against grown men. I mean, it looks good on your resume to say that. Um. So was was college football the goal, or did you just kind of work into it? Like, did you were you get noticed, and somebody told you, "Hey, you really have something here"? Did you kind of wonder, "What am I doing here playing football?" I mean, you said that there was a need for it, but you know, how quickly did it get through your head? Hey, I might, I might have something here. Yeah. So I think the first thought of that was um, like midway um, of the first U nineteen season. Um, at the at the unicorns, because I adapted really quick um, to as a starter um, for that team. Of course, it was a COVID year, so we only played three games. But um, for the coaches to see, hey, this guy he he did really well um, at the first two games, and he can do something really. Um, so the coaches came to me, and also uh, the coaches of the academy came to me and say, hey, you can played football like really good and you you can have a shot at playing college and i was like damn okay i mean that's a pretty big goal um i mean it is it is really crazy to come uh, to go to college from germany or or from europe or anywhere besides the u.s and also in the u.s it is crazy hard like one percent is going to one like and it is it is almost almost like say impossible to to go from international and I, um, yeah, I had the season, and after that, I went to a camp from an organization called PPI, um, and they are offering um, camps all around Europe, so Germany, France, Belgium, all around Europe, and they are searching for players that can play college football. They have the talent to play college football. So the founder of the uh, founder of PPI, Brandon Collier. Um, he noticed me after I went uh, after I went to a camp in a, in Ingolstadt, and he said, "Man, you can you can you really have the talent. You can move pretty well. You have great hips. Um, you can have the you you can play college football." And after hearing all that, you know, um, all that coaches saying to me, "Hey, you can college football," I was like, "Okay, my goal is now playing college football." Yeah, and after that, this was my only goal right now. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so, you, so you get to Florida, you got to figure out, you know, there, there's an the academic side of this. So what do you want to do it, it, major in? What do you see your uh, profession in maybe outside of football? 
Yeah, so um, I really like to um, be creative. So I like to do a graphic design. Okay. Um, I unfortunately can't major graphic design um, because there are some uh, schedule issues. Um, but I am majoring uh, media technology, um, management, and journalism. Good deal. Good deal. So uh, like that, I, I work in the TV business as well. So uh, yeah. it's, uh, I, I, I feel you on that. Uh, no, well, you are here with us through you know all of NIL. You're here on Gators Breakdown because of your NIL deal with Florida Victorious. So how cool is it and how unique is it that you know they're working with international guys like you? Yeah, I think uh, what Florida Victorious is doing is really great. Um, the opportunity to have uh, to be here on a podcast or to work with Florida Victorious is really good. I mean, it's not that common for international guys to have NIL deals, but um, Florida Victorious helped me really good. Um, and they are, um, yeah, really great. So I really appreciate that. So you are home on spring break and, you know, that. what else are you doing uh, while you're home uh, and, and get to spend some time with family? Yeah. So, yeah, no, right now is um, – yeah, of course, spend time with family, spend some time um, with the close ones. Um, I'm visiting um, my uh, my former team. So tomorrow I'm uh, going to the Shrevershaw Unicorns um, and, you know, talk a little bit with, uh, with my old teammates, with the coaches. And um, yeah, that, that that is great. And also, you know, just enjoying the time here in Germany back. Um, yeah, until, you know, it gets springtime. So, yeah. Good deal. Good deal. Everybody out there, Noel is coming to us through Florida Victorious. We look, we've never had access to players like this. Uh, and you can continue great conversations like these by becoming a member of Florida Victorious. Florida Victorious supports Florida student athletes by creating opportunities to build and enhance their personal brand and publicity rights while also serving charities and nonprofits in the community. You can be the difference. You can directly impact the outcome on the field by joining Florida Victorious. You want to help the Gators win? Want a better game day experience? Well, just like when you pack the swamp on game days, your unwavering support through Florida Victorious empowers the Gators to be their best. So join the day and be the difference in making the orange and blue victorious. Visit FloridaVictorious.com and save 20% on your first month using promo code GatorsBD. I know, well, let's get back to the conversation right here. And I, I got to know, have have you, ever, have you ever heard of the University of Florida or the Florida Gators before <laughs> going through the recruiting process, before even having maybe interest in college football? What was your knowledge of the University of Florida? Um, so after starting a football, um, you know, I, I really wanted to see how everywhere in the world is football growing, you know, um, not, not only in the NFL, but, I was, uh, but also how college is playing. And of course, I, I I knew the I knew the Florida Gators before um yeah coming here, um then also you know knowing the the Tim Tebow time of uh, the time between two thousand six two thousand eight, um and yeah no knowing that this is a great great opportunity to have to play here and to be one of the top SEC colleges to play and be here at a, such a good program I mean this is really amazing yeah. There you go. You said Tim T Tim Tebow, so I was wondering, ha have you ever heard of Tim Tebow or Steve yeah. Spurrier, Danny Werfel, of course, and the, the popular quarterbacks, the statues right there outside of the stadium? So I was I was wondering. So that's good. You did you did get to hear of the University of Florida. So what was the recruiting process like? Yeah, I, I'm sure it was a whirlwind. I'm sure it was something unique to you. You camped at Florida. You got an offer. You had offers from Auburn and South Carolina as well. You know, in your unique situation, why, why was Florida the choice? Um, for me, Florida was a choice because um, when I got the offers, um, it was more feeling like home or it was more feeling that they really care about how I am as a human, not only as a player. So it was um, after I got the offer from Billy Napier, um, everybody wanted to see me grow as a human being to to be great in the future and also football is of course a part of that but they want to see me get a, be a better man and i didn't have that feeling um when i had the offer from auburn and south carolina um also a great part is of course the academics um uh florida is one of the top um public schools uh across the country 
um, that was also important for uh, my mom, um, that I get great education. And I think everything for that make the difference. Yeah, I was going to go there next. Uh, you mentioned your mom. So with the relationship between Billy and April, you just kind of mentioned that. I'm sure Coach Rob Sale is a big part of that as well uh, along the offensive line. In your situation, you're so far away from home. You know, you have to – you have to cross the pond, and you have to you, you have yeah. to be here. I'm sure you you mentioned trust, but I'm sure that had to be a lot of trust for you know your mom and your family to say, all right, he's going you know a, a, across the world to go to college. I got to be able to trust who my son's with. Yeah, yeah, of course. And this was probably one of the first things um, that Coach Sale told my mom um, when she was here with uh, with uh, me at the official visit. I'm going to take care of your son, and this was really important for my mom because. As you mentioned, I'm across the pond. I'm across the world. Um, I'm not, you know, like a two-hour uh, train drive away. Um, when I was at Trevor Hall, I can't. I can't go back home in at like the weekends. So um, it was really, really important for my mom that everything's taken care of and that the son is in good hands. So um, and yeah, everything is good. Uh, so I, know, I, I gotta know. So you mentioned your official visit. You didn't get a chance to visit for a game, right? No, no, I wasn't at the game, no. So did you did your interest in Florida, did you get to watch Florida a lot? Did you did you watch them last season? How was how was getting to view Florida football while you were over there in Germany? Um so I tried to watch every game live, um but because of the time difference, some of the time it was really hard. Um I think the easy the easiest game to watch was against Arkansas because yeah. at, then at the whole time it was like um, six p.m. and I was like, okay, you you can watch that. That's that's no problem. But some of the late night games they were like here at two a.m. in the morning, <laughs> and I was like, I don't know if I can watch that. I mean, I try, but um, no. Um, and then um, this it, it's really hard with the time difference. No, but after that. Um, I usually watch the highlights on YouTube. Um, just try to catch how they play, um, what the score is, and you know how how the game went. So you still have to experience your first time with ninety thousand fans going crazy because yeah. you didn't get to do it for the, for a visit or anything. So, what did you take away from watching Florida last year? Talking to teammates, talking to people who have been on visits about the atmosphere of the swamp. I mean, the swamp is kind. It's it's really crazy. I mean, just to hear it through the TV is like, damn, they are they are really getting loud out there. Um, of course, I can't experience that in person. I mean, I have to wait some a few months. But I mean, this is this is this is really this is really crazy. How how the fan base is is really. I mean, it's huge. It's really really huge, and you see that also like in Gainesville when you when you walk around, everybody got. Gator shirts on, a hoodie, even a cap. You know, um, am I fly? Am I um, um, when I was in an airplane back home, two guys had Florida caps on. You know, the the community is really, really big, and I think I, I I'm still I'm I'm still really excited to hear that in the swamp, man. This is this should this can be really amazing. Yeah, so you'll get this. You'll get a taste of it in the spring game, but it but it, it won't be. You know what? What you'll yeah. see is Miami. So I'm going to go ahead and give you, we'll give you a bit of info. If you can remember from here till now, try and take as many mental pictures as you can, so you don't forget it. I mean, you probably won't forget it anyway. It'll be your first one. But uh, when, when Florida plays Miami, that's gonna. I'm telling you, man, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be crazy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, what well, you're listed uh, on your bio for Florida: six foot five, three hundred twenty-two pounds. Um, what was the goals in the off-season workout and the, and the strength and training that you were going through that you wanted to accomplish? And what did the staff want, want you to work on as well? Yeah, so um, I came in I came in at, uh, I think it was 340 pounds. Um, so, yeah, till now I lost about 20 pounds. Um, the, the first goal was to lose weight, to lose body fat. Um, and I think... Right now, till to spring, I, I accomplished that goal. Um, I lost about four percent body fat. I lost uh, twenty pounds um, of actual um, weight, um, 
And I think that is it's just a really good step. It is, it's also a good look um, for the coaches to see that that I can work hard and that I want to accomplish the goals that the coaches are giving me. Good deal. Um, speaking of what 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 you want to work on, let's go to on the field. Uh, I'm sure you mentioned um, your your last time playing football and the type of competition that you had. But what are things you want to work on on the field that you you want to see yourself take a ju- take a jump at? Yeah, so right now I just I just try to work hard. I just try to work hard, make good impressions uh, for the coaches, make good impressions for uh, Coach Rob Sale and Coach Napier, and um, I really I really just try to, yeah, be be a solid be a solid offensive lineman for everybody, um, and to look good, play good, and uh, to you know just work hard for the whole year. And I, I guess it's been expressed. That- more likely at the guard spot for the Gators, or is that still to be determined? Yeah, no, right now um, I'm working on the guard spot, yeah. Okay. Uh, all right, let's get a little more personal uh, right quick before I let you go here. What has been your favorite American meal so far? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Mm. My my favorite American meal is probably like um, like a Chipotle bowl. Okay. Uh, something like that. Um, I never had. I I I had once like a really good mac and cheese, um, but I think like the the spice of, of of from from some like a like a Mexican like a chipotle bowl. I really like that. Yeah, because we don't have like chipotle in Germany, um, so it is it is something new and and I really enjoy it. Yeah. What about what about American barbecue? I mean, American barbecue is it's pretty nice. Yeah, it's pretty good, but and there's it never different flavors of it, of course, too. It, so. it, it, yeah, yeah, of course, but like it never like flashed me. It never, never had like because in Germany we, we also we also have like a like a big barbecue culture. Okay, and of course we we grill other things. Like in Germany, it's um, more pork, um, and but it never like really like flashed me with with flavor and spice. So yeah. I got. I, I got to get. Uh, Shannon Snell is a Gator offensive line legend, and I'm mm-hmm. sure he'll cook barbecue for you at some point. Uh, so, but I'm, I'm going to tell him to make uh, make sure he gives you something special. But we're, we're, we're going to change the mind on American barbecue for you. <laughs> um, no, anything anything funny happened in the last couple of months that you've been been on campus and been with teammates? I mean, anything that's kind of caught you off guard or, or anything like that? Um, I mean, like nothing, not like one moment, but I, I don't, I, I really like it that, um, the Americans are so open. Um, they, it, you, you can, I mean, in Germany, you, you get anxiety when you talk, uh, when you ask somebody what, what the time is and here it's, it's so, it's so much, it's so much different. Like the first time I was in the U S and, um, I was, uh, I was at a Walmart uh, and and there was like uh, an older lady. He said, "Damn, you big as hell," and <laughs> you know it. It is something funny and something like something new. You something that catch you off guard. Um, but it was it was really funny. We had a little conversation going. Um, but you you never experienced that in Germany. But so uh, something like that is always like really funny. Yeah. Good deal. No, well, I, I ask every every player who comes on Gators Breakdown this question: If you get to pick the uniform combination. What would it be? What color helmet? What color jersey? What color pants? What would Noel go with? I mean, oh, that's a really good question. I mean, the all black is is just really really good. Um, but but uh, yeah, if we're going traditional, yeah, 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 with with traditional, I really like the the white jersey with the blue with the blue pants okay. and the orange helmet. I think I think white always looks good. Um, and with the blue pants as like a as like a pop color, um, and then the orange helmet. Of course, you know we got to go with the orange helmet. So um, I, I I like that combo. Yeah. Good deal. Good deal. Uh, Noel, last thing, man. Anything you want Gator Nation out there to know? This is the first time they're really getting to hear in depth from you. Uh, anything you want to share with Gator Nation out there? Um, I mean, of course, I I I'm I'm from across the pond. Um, it is it is something new that Gators football is seeing a, a guy from Germany. Um, but you know, I'm really working hard. I'm trying my best. I'm doing everything I can in my power, um, to make the organization getting better and the program, you know, helping. Yeah. yeah. 
Good deal. Noel Portnyagin joining us right here on Gators Breakdown. Noel, I can't thank you enough. I know you're spending time with family there. We'll keep this for about 30 minutes so you can go enjoy your spring break, enjoy time with the family. But once again, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for being here, man.